Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. <laughs> I guess I started talking before I pushed the live button, but it just tells you that we can communicate even when we are not live. <laughs> Whatever that means, <laughs> God help us. So here we are. Please let me know if you can hear me well. And if you don't, please make an appointment with your ear doctor. And if you do hear me well, let me know so I know that my connections are good. In the meantime, I'll have a sip of tea. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Nothing better than a cup of tea when everything else in life is reasonably okay. Cup of tea enhances that. So lots of little things in life that may by itself don't seem like a big deal, but it enhances the quality of your life just because, not because what it is or what you're doing, just because the pleasure of it and the experience of it and enhancement of it, bringing that certain unattainable psychological security through that experience of something as simple as drinking tea, will take you out of the influences of thoughts and challenges and obstacles and preparations and everything else that could be either in the past or in the future and it relieves you from all such time and space and brings you to one and only one instance where life takes place, which is the now, which is your efforts, whatever it is doing, it, you, you're doing. If you're mindful of that with full attention, life begins to look painless. Because you're in that one moment involved and engulfed with your effort for whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And in that effort, there is actuality. There is the moment of happening, the moment of life, where nothing else but what you're trying to accomplish exists because of your mindfulness and full attention. Therefore, by default, it alleviates all other concerns, at least for that one, one moment. So if we can remain in that one moment all the time or as much as we can, we have increased the quality of life with less of a chores and pains and concerns and more of a tranquility that we all seem to be striving. So I guess nobody answers me as far as if you guys can hear me okay. <laughs> Go ahead, totally ignore me. It's fine. Kuro is here. Muhammad Ansari Khan is here. And let me just say hello to everyone. Adeb is here. Adeb. 20 years old uh, from India. Muhammad is... Muhammad, you forgot to tell me age and where you are. You want to include that? And we have Frederick, male 27, Norway. Uh -huh. I should learn something in Norwegian. I guess you say hello. <laughs> hello is hello. <laughs> Universal. And uh, who else? We have Tukaz Kowalski. Says, Mary, it's all okay. Great to hear from you. Good. Thank you. And Tukaz, don't forget about age. 
and which country you're at. If I'm not wrong, you are possibly Polish, but I don't know where you're located. So please let me know age and location. And if I'm right or not. <laughs> and Art uh, Polamo, male 29 US. Okay. And we have MD Samir Khan, 18 male India. All right. Thank you for that. The ones who didn't include the credentials as far as age, gender, and where you're tuning in from, please do include that when I get to your questions. So Muhammad says, I'm Aaron. My question is. Is every male OCD sufferer is a Zygma male as he loves his gender being heterosexual male? I don't know what Zygma male actually is. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can uh, figure that out here in a second. I can maybe shed some light. Zygma male. That was that. Zygma male is a slang term used in masculinist subcultures for a popular, successful, but highly independent and self reliant man. Another term for a Zygma male is a lone wolf. I guess. I guess every every one of us have at least some Zygma male in us because we all love to be independent, powerful, successful, um, capable, strive for our goals, achieve it, <clears throat> and um, conquer, which could have interpretations of all kinds. So uh, then getting back to your question, says, is every male OCD sufferer is a Zygma male? Doesn't have to be OCD sufferer, whether you are or not. Whatever you are, you're focused on being the best of that, what you can be. And if you're really so protective of it, meaning it's so important to you, the qualities that endowed you, the qualities that you appreciate about yourself and about your gender, uh, you become too protective of it to the point that the brain picks it up, starts attacking you with the opposite of it, which brings fear and anxiety. And that's not because you have any inclination or interest towards what the brain is suggesting, it's because with everything that you love so much in life and you value it so much, there's an automatic default feeling of fear of losing it. And that's normal. It's not that you will lose that thing. If it's your nose or your ears or whatever else, it, it won't happen. But the fear is created because it's a natural counter of what you value and crave and focus on and identify with all that that makes you who you are what you identify with what you value what you hold sacred you always fearful of losing it because that's the most valuable thing to you are you not worried about when your parents go out shopping are you not worried about if you have children if your children go into school if they will be safe are you not worried about uh, your wife being safe and healthy or Nobody bothers her when she goes out about her business during the day. Are you not worried about your love not to leave you or some kind of a disaster happens? These are all because you care and you love. Uh, you have love for that or those people. Same thing. You have love for who you are, your gender, your inclination, your identity, the things that you're interested in. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever you love, there is a default force of fear that creates anxiety for losing it. Your money, you're fearful of losing it. Your home, fearful of using it. 
whatever it is, your car, you're fearful of somebody scratching it. It's just the way it is, and it comes to you. It's the same thing. Now, Muhammad says, I love myself being more and more masculine. Second question, yeah. Second question, do I learn a scope of, uh, do I learn to cope with OCD with time? As I'm 18 male teenager, I need more maturity to deal with anxiety and intrusive thoughts against my gender. It's not that you need maturity. You just need to understand what brain is all about, what its role and function and malfunctions are, and to understand how this machine works and doesn't work. It's glitches, rather than thinking this machine is you. The problem with us who get into the glitch of OCD subsets, such as HOCD or whatever else that it could be, different subsets for different people, is that, I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, ah yeah the problem is that most of us have not recognized the role of our brain in our existence and somehow we have been convinced or duped that the brain is the intelligence and the brain is me. What it suggests that makes me who I am. Hmm? But you forgot that this very brain that you're talking about it in this way, you didn't even have it 40,000 years ago. So how did you live for those other millions of years? You lived instinctively without such sophisticated brain who had the ability, who has the ability to think and speak. You lived for millions of years uh, instinctively without the ability to think or speak. That's why there was less of a mental issues at that time when we did not have this sophisticated brain because we couldn't think or speak. And uh, thoughts are the roots of problems roots of all problems so when we couldn't think our life was very simple there was no ocd because there was no thinking to feel fear now try to combat it by doing something weird in order to reverse the fear of feeling of fear and all that thing that we do and so you were running and sleeping and hunting and having sex and there was no questions because there was no thoughts Everything was streamlined and instinctively done. There was no questions whatsoever. But then, 40,000 years ago, you got this kind of a brain developed into this. But still, you have to understand it's an organ that is enhanced and it's now uh, uh, subject for brilliance and malfunctions can be very helpful in uh, helping you to accomplish, figure out that something, accomplish something, or learn something, calculate something. Or at the same time, it's susceptible to make grave mistakes and confusion and lack of ability to compile or, com or be rational. All of that is part of the brain, but the problem is when we use it to our advantage, so, oh, it's brilliant. But when it makes mistake, we think it's us who making a mistake, <laughs> not the brain. All the good things goes there. And when it messes up, we suddenly think, oh, I'm messing up. Something wrong with me. So the same thing when it suggests things about your inclination or things that you, it's not part of your values, but you bamboozle and you think, oh, it must be you. Why? Because the brain thought, of it. well, it, it thought of it, not me. Because you have to understand that um, brain is not intelligent. Brain doesn't have intelligence. Intelligence is not there. 
there are aspects of the brain and you, um, aspects of mind and you that the brain cannot even reach. And we've discussed that in different videos that I've made. But one thing that is very critical for you to learn, to understand, is that intelligence does not reside in choices. Intelligence is in the veto power. Why? Because according to the experiment, laboratory experiment, Dr. Leibet, one of the world renowned neurosurgeons or neuroscientists, and these many of these doctors have done um, Nobel Prize uh, level of echelon of research in their fields. And one of the research was what Dr. Leibet done, which he got a bunch of subjects uh, in his laboratory, people, and while he had electromagnetic probes attached to their heads, so many of them, he asked them to record, log, an exact precise time when they choose to do something simple, such as push the button. Not when they push the button, but when they decide to push the button. So there was a big clock in the laboratory, and when the, the second hand or the, the, the second moving, the, what is it, not the minute hand, the other one that keeps moving 60 times per minute, they could see exact time when they decide to push the button. Again, not when they push the button, when they decide to push the button. So they logged it, like whatever time it was, to 15 and 10 seconds. They logged it. So when the experiment finished, he looked at the log of, let's say, this participant, and he said, 2, 15, 10 seconds, he decided to push the button. And then he looked at the electromagnetic recording. It shows at half a second, about half a second, before 2, 15, 10 seconds, there was a spike in the electromagnetic field of the brain. Because of that, then the materialists, who from thousand years ago there was a discussion about materialism and dualism, which Aristotle in thousand years ago was saying that there's something beyond the brain. It's not all atoms and void. Atoms and void is what materialists say. Is there something or nothing? And Aristotle was discussing that there is something beyond the brain, beyond material, that is not in control of the physical being. So that discussion extended toward time until the modern science was able to prove it. And in this case, the materialists, they say, huh? Half a second before the subject chose to push the button, there was activity in the brain. That means brain makes all decisions. Brain does everything. Dr. Labi says, wait, there's a second part to this experiment. Hmm? And so, for whatever reason, when the neurons are all getting together, there would be some kind of a arrangement when, the, when you're deciding, and so there was a spike. But whatever the reason is, it's uh, neither here nor there. But the important part is this, that he then said to the subjects, says, now this time... I want you to decide to do that same simple thing or other way, simple thing at a certain time and log the time that you decide to do that thing. And then after you decided, say, oh, no, I changed my mind. Veto it. So when this experiment took place, they logged to 15, I don't know, 11 seconds, they decided to push the button. And then, oh, no, I changed my mind, veto it. And then when they checked the electromagnetic fields and uh, filing, recording, they said, yes, just about half a second before deciding to do a certain thing, there was a spike in the brain 
But when they decided and when they actually vetoed it, there was no activity in the brain. Brain was not involved, which I conclude that the intelligence is in the vetoing part of our life. In other words, intelligence is not in the suggestions that we hear or comes to us or even we think of it. Let go with the uh, discussion about if we if the brain knows or doesn't know before we decide. No, forget that. Let's say whatever. But the suggestion can come from all corners. Other people, the brain, as this experience showed that half a second before we decide there was an activity. So, okay, let's say brain is involved. But there is something beyond the brain that cannot reach, and that's when vetoing takes place, which is where the scrutiny comes along, where the judgment comes along. And in the judgment, in the vetoing of something that we do not agree with, we do not choose it, that's where the intellect is. Because it's pure without interference of others or the brain. There is no electromagnetic involvement in your vetoing section. And that's what I call where the intelligent resides. In your judgment, in your vetoing, not in the suggestion. So when the brain pours out all these intrusive thoughts, these are the reactions and based on anxiety and fears, all are subject to being affected and influenced by some kind of a emotion or reasoning or fears or anxiety or physical or whatever malfunction or function or suggestion. But it's when it's not involved, that's the pure part, and that's when you actually judge it and scrutinize it and use your intellect to see if it's worthwhile for your lifestyle, for your ways or not, and you veto it. In that decision-making, brain doesn't matter if it's functioning or not because it's not involved at all anyhow. So it's like you don't have a brain, but you have the intellect. When we didn't have this brain, we lived like animals. We still had an intellect. Where did that intellect come when we did not have the brain that could actually function or be involved in any decision making? So where was that intellect? If the brain is intellect, then we shouldn't have any ability to be an intellectual or figure out things or reason things when we didn't have this brain. But we did. We lived for millions of years. That means the intellect is outside of the brain. So when these suggestions or intrusive thoughts or OCD or whatnot, whatever shape it may be, comes along, it's got nothing to do with you. It has to do with the organ that is functioning in a certain way or malfunctioning in a certain way. So you need to separate brain from you in order to get your sanity back and understand that what suggestion is, is not the intellect, is not your identifier, is not your identity, is not you. It's an organ's reaction to whatever. Hmm? And what you decide on that suggestion, veto or whatnot, that's where your intellect is. Not the influence, but the source. You be the source, that's where the intellect is. Vetoing, judgment. You are the influence, you're being subject to influence, that's, that's not you. Or suggestion, that's not you. All right, having said that, let's go on to... All right. I can answer a certain number of questions for each person, but uh, when it's get a little bit too much, and you can go on my site, mindatsixtruth.com. Make an appointment for Skype consultation, and then we'll discuss what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Anto Seropian says, hello, Mehran. I'm back from previous streams. <laughs> okay. Please keep anonymous in videos. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know... Uh, I simply cannot really comply to that. Uh, if it comes out, your name or whatnot, 
what you can do, you can change your screen name. So when I call upon you or use your name, then it would be incognito. But don't put that on my shoulder because if you're on this channel, it's public. I will use the bits and so on. But um, it is not always I remember who said, don't mention my name, who said, do mention my name. So if you don't want your name mentioned, just change your um, thumb screen or what is it, thumbnail or the screen name. Make it easy for myself because I can't take that such responsibility. Everything here is public. Uh, I try to remember what you asked, but, but I may forget when I'm making the videos. Uh, but um, anyhow. <laughs> so, and he says, I wanted to ask you something. Last time I was in class and I saw a good-looking guy and then obviously my HOCD kicks in. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what? F-T-E-R? Or after I talked to him, after I talked to him, I felt something weird. I got scared what if I have a crush on him? So, so what? <laughs> You're not responsible for these feeling as an identifier. You know? You know, let me make it very descriptive for you. And you guys probably can understand. You're really getting uptight about you see someone that is good looking and you forget about all other possible interpretations that you see them as a nemesis, you see them as a, a blocker to your chances with the girls because he's a better looking guy in your opinion. You forget about the fact that human being is designed to like good, good looking things, good looking handbag, good looking horse, good, good looking shoes, good looking woman, good looking man. It's all normal to notice good quality, good looking symmetric things. It's part of the whole universe. You look at flowers and leaves, they're all symmetric. They are designed to look good. And we appreciate that. Hmm? So, but when it happens to the same gender, suddenly you freak out as if it's supposed to mean something. No, it's no different than looking at something else of any nature that is good looking. Good looking dog, good looking horse. But you don't have no problem with that. Oh, maybe I'm a horse or sexual. Maybe I'm dog or sexual. I really like, I think really this dog is really good looking. Now let's go further. You look at yourself in the mirror and say, wow, I look hot. You go to the gym and do the muscles and look at them and keep figuring out on just po posing and all that. And you feel great about the fact that you look good. Why? Because you compare that as a tool that you will use it with women. So you like to look good. And when you take a look at someone, when you see someone good looking of the same gender, it has the same effect as when you're looking your, your, at yourself and considering your looks in relation to girls. Hmm? Activities and attraction that the girls would have towards you. That's why you make yourself look good. So looking good, having good muscles, represent to you a concept of sex, sensuality with girls. And so when you see another good look, it has the same association in the brain because brain doesn't understand uh, that that's another guy or that it just associates good looks to what you have trained it to mean. Good looks, woman. Good looks, concept of sex. So you see another man good looks or muscly. It also triggers the same association. But then you say because the trigger was another guy, same gender, it must mean I'm interested in it. Then why is it that when you actually trying to masturbate in your bed and touching yourself, you don't say, oh, maybe I want to fuck myself. Maybe I'm interested in my own body. What the hell is that? It's by touch, is by thought, is by association to sex, is about what you've conditioned your, yourself to pay attention to, your body and association with women and sex. That's a heterosexual life. But you try interpret all these natural things and make something out of it because you are having an OCD and in interested in bring in assurances because your gender and your inclination is so important to you, so 
engraved in your whole soul that you're so protective of it. So everything out there, you got to be assured. Otherwise, you may think, oh, I'm not perfect. Or something is attacking my identity, which is so important to me. I, this thing is so precious to me. I'm going to hold it so tight and I'm going to hide it from everybody so it will never be tarnished in any shape or form or left or I lose it or whatnot. That's the kind of a feeling you have about your gender sexuality, which is unnecessary at all. There's no need for that. It's given to you in the womb of your mother. That's going to be how it's going to be until you die. Now, the rest of it is the function of the brain and thoughts and intrusive thoughts, which we talked about it. It's not the intelligence. It's not the intellect. It's just the fear and anxiety of not having what you love the most and value the most. But then you go through all these tangents of interpretations and you interpret them differently than you see a horse. It looks good. It's fine. Got muscles, big muscles. It's fine. Even can re instigate sexual thoughts when the horse's muscles are because muscle automatically associates with sex but at that instant you don't say oh am i that means i'm interested in that horse no it's just a muscle and that you have trained yourself the muscle means sex and that's in relation to women for you but when it comes to another human being suddenly you freak out it's all natural and means nothing to your gender, it just means that's how the brain associates things. And let it be, however it is. No interpretation necessary. All right. All right, the rest of it I'm not going to even read because it's just a waste of time. You've already uh, been given that answer. Listen, guys, all thoughts are okay because they're thoughts. You have no power. You have no meaning in relation to you. There is no interpretation needed. You can interpret anything you want, but that doesn't mean that interpretation is facts or it has any merits or it's changing anything or it can or it means anything. It just means your brain is busy interpreting shit. Don't pay attention to it. What do you do when you walk around? There's so many people doing different things. One reads this book. One reads that book. They're all reading it loud. One is playing some uh, sports. One is playing a different sports. They're all there. You see them all. You hear them all. Well, you go about your business. You don't start interpreting. Oh, what did he read? What does that mean? What does... No, I'm not interested. They can be interested in their own thing. I'm just going to do my thing. You don't have to interpret everything they come across, or everything you hear, everything you see. It's no different than saying, because my eyes has the ability to see what those people are doing, what those people are eating, what uh, sports they're playing, what kind of a lifestyle they have, that means I am actually interested in that. No, I have the ability to see all these things, and they're part of this world. They, they live, they exist, and they all can exist. I accept and allow everything to exist. But that doesn't mean just because I allow and accept everything to exist, I would want to be part of it or I'm interested in it. I'm interested in whatever I'm interested in. So seeing something doesn't mean I'm part of it or I agree with it or I like it. I'm capable of seeing everything. So I'm capable of any kind of a thought coming to my head. I have a receiver. All these thoughts from Akashic Universe, Akashic Library of the Universe come in. I have the ability. It's like I have a television and all these channels can reflect their programs there. It doesn't mean that my television made it or I made it in my home. No, it's an ability to receive. So receive. I don't have to figure it out why is there. What does it mean? What is, I just go about the channel that I want. That's it. And allow everything to exist. Don't need to interpret anything. All right. All right, the rest of the OCD, HOC things, I think we've discussed it enough and all have a similar answer. Frederick says, nice to meet you, Mehran. Mail 27, Norway. Hello there. Says, I have started to chat with a girl who I really like 
She's 26, recently felt fled from Ukraine along with her son because of the war. You're 27 years old. She's 26 years old. She's a refugee. She's just fled from Ukraine and she's in Norway along with her son. Okay. And Frederick says, mm, well, this is the same thing. And there's the rest of it. And says, she lives in a city quite far away from me. So it's difficult to meet. Also, I don't want to push it too much. I've asked to meet up a few times, but I never get a clear response since it's difficult for her with timing, her son, etc. Even though she says she wants to meet. I wonder if I should continue investing in this potential interest or just move on. Find myself as soon as a girl shows interest, I get all caught up in thoughts of what should be and what should happen. And if it doesn't happen right now, it makes me depressed. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, <laughs> natural way of being a man <laughs> when it comes to women. What attitude should I have in this situation? If you need further information, please let me know. Thanks. Frederick, it's a very good question. It's a general question about us men. And especially when you're in the younger end of your life. Women are very important to us, heterosexual males. We just love women. We want women. We need women to be balanced. We need them. We love to take care of them, cherish them, share with them, have their touch in our hearts, have their touch in our physical world, and be able to cater to them, protect them. That's what men do since God knows when. Now, despite of all these efforts to change men to more feminine, all that's all bullshit. Stay as your genetic, traditional conditioning is for a heterosexual male to be what it's supposed to be. Choose role models. Look at James Bond. Look at you know Sean Connery, and keep this persona intact without allowing all the other propaganda which is suitable for maybe other lifestyles but not you to affect you in a way to kind of loosen up your duty to be a protector to be a gentleman to be a chevalier to be what you need to be to protect um in all aspects of life when it comes to women. So, however, in your case, in this particular case, again, because you're a man and you're a heterosexual male, when it comes to women, you have this feeling of rescue, that I must rescue this woman. And that sometimes is a legitimate feeling, but sometimes is a cop-out, is an excuse for you to legitimize your sexual interest and your agenda or your natural interest towards wanting to be with that woman for intimacy, companionship. But you put a twist of morality to it. That is my duty to save this woman and help her child to grow in a good environment and all that and you become suddenly God has put this in front of me to give me importance and all that thing that you go through your head but you have to think about it. different culture she's new here she hasn't figured out I don't know how long she's been here she has a son 
You don't know what the situation with her, the father of the child is, if they're still in contact or not. It, you don't know any of that. And you don't know what really she's all about, what she's looking for, what her background has been, um, your values and her values, would they, are, are they compatible or are they going to cross or clash? What her expectations are, what your expectations, none of that is known uh, basically because of different environment, different reasons for her to be here and her maybe first and foremost uh, interest would be survival new country fleeing from other nation for whatever reason and the child and you are taking on the child as a as part of a package not as part of your choice naturally when you're a young man you prefer your girlfriend would not have a child already. But because you're sexually charged and impatient, you may put up with anything that is there. They may even have their mother to live with you together. You may be okay. Why? Because you're still focused on that possibility of getting some. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's life, laugh it up. <laughs> so, so, however, you should be honest with yourself and put her in a respectful position rather than thinking of her as a vulnerable and that you're doing her a favor while in fact you're justifying it but you're actually after something that you so desperately want. Which all of that means you need to be honest with yourself and understand that you're taking on the package, not because it's your choice, it's because you're focused on this is the price of getting the relationship that you're looking for. I don't know what's the specialty about her. If she's just good looking, well, so there are so many other girls that are good looking. I mean, for heaven's sake, Norway is a place for all the pretty girls. So it's not a shortage of pretty girls. But because she's easy or available or somehow you stumbled onto her and she has a need or she's alone or she feels vulnerable or expresses that kind of a need, you feel manly, which is an easy way of feeling manly. Once you go after something that is maybe more difficult to get and then feel, I deserved it. She's Norwegian, same culture, same at least understanding we lived in the same part of the world i mean if it was like norway and sweden i wouldn't think of it much but it's norway and ukraine is different culture and different social values and social systems political systems all those will play a role in your future interaction with this woman I'm not saying she's below you or you're over her. She may be above you. I don't know. But what I'm saying is there are differences. And these differences are not just simply about different language. It's a different way of life so far. Different values, different focus, different needs. So you come from different angles. You have a different angle for selecting her she has a different angle to responding positively possible. But you, your angle is a selfish reason. Hers too, of course. But you are there masked on your eyes. You can't see anything because that's what most of us men happen to react to a beautiful girl or an opportunity with a woman who uh, touches you on different levels not just physically, but also emotionally, mentally, culturally, and these are all um, uh, attempting, attempting to pull a wool over your eyes as far as you're supposed to be responsible, and you feel this is the right choice because 
I feel the desire for pleasure. If you make your decisions based on your desire, it's not always going to be correct because you will be making decisions in order to fulfill uh, that desire, but not necessarily those decisions would be the best decision for you or her. So what I'm suggesting to you is that don't press and understand this is a complicated situation. Well, why would you need to be a chevalier right now, chivalry, to save a woman and her child? She's already there. She knows what to do. She will find at the right time what she's needed. You don't even know what her intentions are. How do you know she really likes you rather than she has an ulterior motive just like you do? You want to have intimacy with her or feel good about yourself that you're doing something positive, you're helpful in the eyes of the watcher, the God or whatever you have created, which is your own thoughts. Suddenly you feel great. Oh, I'm doing something great. And then you expect her to pay for what it is that you're doing to feel great. Then, you know, expectations and resentments and all that. Your reasoning to be with her should not be that you're doing a favor. And she may, how do you know? She may be responding to you positively because she wants to survive. And she has that need, not necessarily compatible with you, but maybe when she's, uh, you know, her boat is out of the mud, she may decide, well, I want something different. Because don't forget, uh, she's been in a different environment and uh, she is now in the Western, let's say, part. Traditionally, of course, there's no east and west, so to speak, but nevertheless, it's Norway. It's a different uh, environment. And so she wants to try different things. Maybe she'll come with you and you'll invest yourself in the child and you grow fond of him and you, he will identify with you. And then she decides to move on to, I don't know, different environment or different situation or somebody else because she also wants to see how far she can go. Just like you may find somebody prettier or somebody in a better position and you also will desire that one. So all these things are, she just arrived too early. Why don't you let her go get a job, let her figure out things, let her sort out uh, the situation with her, I don't know, spouse or uh, whoever the father of the child is or figure out uh, what uh, her son needs to make all those comfort levels uh, prepared. And then she's free in her mind. And if she comes to you, it's not out of need. It's out of interest for a companionship or a relationship. Right now, you have no idea. And so my suggestion is you can be friend with her if you like. But what's wrong with uh, finding uh, Norwegian girls that you don't have these barriers, at least? You don't have to save someone. And you don't feel obligated to... And you don't, you're not going to end up looking like or thinking about yourself as a hero and then expect her to be so submissive to you and because I did this for you. Just lay off all that. Find equal situations and then go from there. That's all I can say from not knowing the rest of this stuff. You know? Because uh, when we men, not all of us, but most of us, when we see someone who is uh, somewhat attractive or tantalizing or hits your buttons. If you don't really focus and think, you may actually start making decisions that are not really well founded. Yeah. All right. Art Olamo, male 29 US, is worried I won't find love, and that 29 is too old. <laughs> really? Let me get my uh, ugly stick and give you a bashing on the head. Put your motorcycle helmet on, because I'm going to break this on your head. Why? Because you say 29 is too late. God damn it, I'm 66, so I should go and die, huh? Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> So, what do you mean? 29? You, bloody hell, you don't even know which end is up. So, <laughs> learn something about yourself. And you have learned somewhat at this age. And 
Now you have an idea what kind of a girl you want. Uh, it's it's beyond sex, you know. Uh, the, the older you get, more sophisticated you become, and the older you get, uh, the more different uh, women could pay attention to you because now you have more than a, a physical attributes to offer, and women are not necessarily always choosing their men based on physical attribute. While that's important, of course, for anybody. But that's not their only criteria. They want a lot more than that. They want a lot more in a man that we want in a woman. Uh, we see a woman beautiful. She's got all the credentials we need, at least at the outset. We don't think any further. We think, oh, she's qualified perfectly. Look, she's wearing the high heels. She's got the hair. She's got the you know, outgoing personality. And she's got everything else. But also I want, I mean, she's perfect. But women look at many other aspects. Reliability, trust, credibility, uh, able to provide, able to protect um, gentlemanliness, um, care. Uh, all these attention, all these things that puts the whole uh, thing together. So the older you get when you gain these experiences, wisdom, and further your life in ability to negotiate better in life, women want somebody who can be part of a solution as far as, if not financial, at least if they're uh, self, uh, um, you know, uh, they can take care of themselves financially, they would still want someone who can be part of a solution, who has experiences, who can be helpful in the times of need uh, as certain values and understanding or information or principles that can be helpful in negotiating challenges of life. And as you get older, you will find more younger girls will actually be attracted to you, which it would be you would have to be careful just because they're young. That doesn't mean a feather in your cap. You may think it is. But they also bring with themselves lots of inexperience, lots of irrational behavior, lots of uh, um, lack of confidence, insecurities, lots of insecurities. And all these, you have to deal with it, which all you really want is, oh, she's pretty and she's young. And I just love her. But no, a relationship becomes a lot more than that when it changes, passes the first uh, while. If it's only chosen by the way of the looks, if the girl chooses the man just because he's got good fit body, and if the man chooses the girl because she's gorgeous, that's part of the opportunity that is created between the two people when they choose each other basis on the aesthetics it's an invitation to use that time to get to know each other on a consciousness level if they do that and bond on conscious level when this novelty um, uh, ends which in all cases it diminishes then they still are excited about each other because they now have bonded on different level and not just physical level so the combination will still keep a relationship or gives it give it give the relationship a chance to last healthier and longer but if it's only physical then it ends i mean you guys have sex maybe uh, uh, 500 times or 100 200 times and eventually now you're looking for something else why because there was nothing else other than physical connection but then your mental uh, compatibility was not fulfilled, which is the part that has a big role in a relationship. So, um, at age 29, you're just beginning to know who you are and or just about to, and you're beginning to know what kind of women you want. With all these things that you've uh, you know witnessed or experienced, now you're beginning to have an idea what women are like, what things to look for, what things to watch out for, how to sniff it out, if it's the right girl or not, 
uh, if you have money, if she's a gold digger, if you don't have money, if she's got substance to bring, is she just there to have fun or is she there to maybe bond? All these things are things that you're figuring it out. So thinking that 29 is too old, I mean, you know, I have choice word for you. And that is in French, they say, fuck you. <laughs> All right. I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, <laughs> Um, art now Adep says I also have something more to add you do yeah it's bullshit it's just it's again another intrusive thought as long as you keep entertaining these thoughts and interpreting them you're just going through a you know rabbit hole you need to understand intrusive thoughts is part of what the brain does. You're not supposed to be. Do you pay attention to every goddamn person who's saying something while you're going from point A to point E about your business? No, you hear them, but you just go. You don't try to interpret. What do they say? Well, who cares? Same thing with the brain. All right. Now, again, guys, I can't discuss the things in real detail. Every one of them could take a couple of hours at least. To begin with so if you're interested to have more consultation with me go on my site mind that seeks truth.com and make an appointment for skype consultation and we'll explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on skype and md summer says 18 male india okay Brithao Barua says, male 33, India. Hello, Maren. Hello there. And Tukas Kowalski says, 35, yes, I'm from Poland. Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Rushi Patel. Rushi says, I have communicated to her clearly no says hi Maran. i'm 33 indian from california and my wife and i are separated for one year but she wants to move on and keeps calling me and i keep talking because i feel bad for her how to stop i, I don't understand the whole story now, perhaps you need to make an appointment with me at mind at six truth.com and make a one hour appointment. I'll add 30 minutes to it and we'll have plenty of time to discuss the nitty gritties. Because from this, what do I know? What? Who broke it off? How old is she? Why did she break it off? If she did, why did you break it off? If you did, where is she living now? What does she do? What is her job? What is her education? What are you? What are your, you have children, you don't, all these things, you know, I'm good, but I'm not a magician. So, <laughs> so says, I have communicated to her cordially, no, clearly, I, it won't work out between us, but can't keep rejecting her. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's not a formulation. It's an interesting, of course, dilemma. I need a lot more information. And if you don't, if you like, can go and make an appointment and I'll certainly be glad to explore it with you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Tukas Kowalski says, Poland male 35, says, Mayron, how to be independent from other people? Make your own money. How to be focused on our own goals? Interpret what those goals means to your lifestyle and the quality of your life. When you interpret the meaning of accomplishment of certain goal to your life and quality of your life, your independence, your image, and whatever it is that you want to look like and you want others to see you as, then you will strive further to make those goals happen. And says... And the people that interrupt our focus, girls, blessings. <laughs> girls are always blessing. There is nothing really more hopeful than when you like a woman and 
you want to do things for her or at least you want to be there for her or you just want to comfort her in her challenges you may not be able to do anything for her as far as financially you may not be in that position but your experience your ability to help uh, be a hearing station for her that she can say or oh, vent you don't have to even solve anything just the fact that you're there for her it's a blessing now when you see it distracted if you mean that you get to know a girl and then it's problems and she's got all kind of dramas and expectations well then uh, that's not uh, coinciding with your uh, goals at hand at the moment and you may want to walk away from that or just tell her, listen, I, I'm willing to be, you know, friends or friends with benefits or whatever it is that you both agree. But I'm not able to handle all these things, come focus on accomplishing something, maybe at some other time in a further. If you're willing to curtail that, curtail that relationship to these parameters, I'm more than happy. But if not, I'm going to lose something that is detrimental to my life for a... Um, temporary pleasure that it's not necessarily um, reliable at the moment. So, and Rishika Sardana says, Hi, Miran. I was wondering the concept of intelligence or the factor that differentiates us from animals called. Ah. First of all, you give me your age and where you're tuning in from and your gender. I can see the little thumbnail. Looks like you're a lady. I appreciate that information. And I read your question again. I was wondering the concept of intelligence or the factor that differentiates us from animals. Vetoes. Vetoes, ability to veto. Intelligence, what sets us apart is not just the decision-making or ability to dissect things or choose. It's ability to veto a suggestion or a choice based on judgments that you make in regards to the effect of that choice or that thing to your life, to your needs, the pros and cons of it. But ultimately, it filters down to one action. Not decision to do something, but decision not to do something. Veto, that's where the intelligent resides, in my opinion. And I'm unanimous on that. <laughs> um, I believe that this is what we just talked about. No one has discussed it. That's my hunch. I don't think anyone has summed it up in the way we just did. That's why my channel has millions of subscribers, if you can see. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're missing out. <laughs> we are unknown. All right. So we have answered all the questions. And it is one hour, four minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, perfect timing for me to mosey on out. Oh, we have another question here. MD Samer Khan says, Mehran, sir, are you businessman and rich? <laughs> no, I'm a businessman, I'm not rich. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. <laughs> says, tell me, tips to become rich and successful with hard work and smart work do something that you love 
that you're passionate about and then be very good at it. Then find your niche market. Um, I made my money through a different thing than this. I never liked that different thing. I was very good at it. I knew the law. I knew the contracts. I knew the whole function of it, and I was very good at it. I was very conscientious, very honest. I made lots of money for my clients, and um, I took very good care on them, of them, and I put their interests ahead of mine. I was a very good professional in that field, and I still uh, am involved in that because that's where sometimes uh, I make, you know, good money out of it. However, it never satisfied me. I never liked it. Didn't necessarily like the people that I was working with. There were odd people here and there that were good people, good clients, nice people, classy, reliable. But mostly in that profession were charlatans and shysters and liars and going back on the words and you can't rely on them. Whether they were clients or colleagues, didn't matter. It was a Generally, I consider it a shitty business, but uh, lots of people make lots of money out of it, and I had a good uh, life uh, style because of it. Uh, however, I never felt satisfied, never felt that I'm doing something important. I was making money, but didn't satisfy me, didn't give me a, a level of service to humanity or feeling I'm learning things beyond that profession. It was very empty for me, maybe just my character, because I, I guess I like, I, I love to make money from helping people. I love money. I like money. I know no, no ifs and buts about it. But at the same time, I like helping people. And in this business, I've helped thousands of people without money. But I like to make money, of course. So I'm gearing toward marketing it. But first, before you do all that, you got to become really good at it. Meaning genuine interest. Lots of people made a lot more money than I ever did in the business that I was involved in. As I said, I still am. Because they probably genuinely loved what they were doing. Which to me was just money. I like money, but making money only from the means that it does not interest me or challenge me is not that important for me. But making money from something that I can advance my understanding of myself and helping others from their suffering, ah, that's sweet grape. Sweet grape, sweet anything. <laughs> So find something that you love and be good at it. In this business, I spent thousands of hours, literally, uh, about a learning something that I adored. I, I loved learning about it. It was like I couldn't wait till I come from, from work, come home, and then start investigating, start researching on the topic, the subject of... Thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, the movement of the psyche. From the scholars of 100 years ago, I would stay up till 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and just taking these in over and over, thousands of hours of lectures and discussions between the, the um, uh, what is it, uh, scholars and then psychologists and quantum physics professors gather around this scholar and discussing the movement of the psyche and the concept of what is thinking, what is thoughts, consciousness, fear, content of the consciousness, conditioning of the content of the consciousness, desire, ego, mechanical process, order, all these things with the discussions that was happening among these psychologists and the professors and this scholar who had come up with this understanding, who belonged to 100 years ago, 
I couldn't wait till I get to him every night. And then I would, I used to, I used to walk on the beach one, two o'clock in the morning, think about what I absorbed from these conversations, from these lectures, and then make my own notes, make my own recordings in the middle of the night. A few times, and police stop me. <laughs> they say, "Oh, sir, you're, you're uh, what are you doing at this time of night?" <laughs> so I'm just walking. Oh, you know. Then we we became friends, and then I started asking and helping them with their <laughs> supposedly challenges in their minds. Uh, at least we discussed it and so on. So that is the level of interest to learn. I just wanted to learn. Why? Because I could see there are things that I've learned in university, in martial arts and meditation and uh, relationship between mind and core, mind and body coordination and understanding the relationship between our energy and the energy of the universe and the nature and all that. But still some things were missing. So when I had the opportunity and this door was open, it was like fish to water. I couldn't wait more, more. <laughs> So, ten, twelve years later, I'm here, and since a few years ago, I added research on neuroscience and OCD, which I dealt with it throughout my childhood, not caring about it, not knowing that something that needs to be looked at, just dealt with it. You know, it was inconvenient, but didn't think much of it. OCD, you know, turn the light switch on 50 times so your dad won't die or your mother, <laughs> all these, you know, things. So it was very interesting to me to learn about movement of the psyche and put it to work. And then be able to use it and then expand it to other subsets of OCD and then help people because of the understanding of all these. And then my research went in so deep that then I was able to come up with ways to prove things that were challenging to prove philosophically. And then I used the neuroscience and modern science in order to find evidence with the experiments of the experts and surgeons and scientists, how they have been able to contribute in what I wanted to prove. So philosophically and scientifically, I am now equipped to be able to help as much as I can and open certain concepts and make it easy for digestion. That's what I'm good at. And when you find what you're good at and you strive to learn more rather than having a hoopla, learn more, humbly learn more and then put it to work by helping people, then you become better and better at understanding their problems and then instigates you from more of a thinking to solve their problems with the information and the knowledge that you have trained yourself and learned through your research. That is how you become good at it. And eventually, it may take time, but eventually people realize that there is that guy, there is that entity, there is that woman, there is that person who actually knows and can make me understand. There are many people who actually make an appointment with me. And once we are done, they say, you know, I've gone to psychologists and psychotherapists I could, they couldn't help me. I couldn't understand what they're talking about. You, I can understand. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm a researcher. I like to learn things inwardly, and I have. So I'm now able to deliver it in such a way that I know how their brain can absorb and what are the glitches in there and what avenues and how I can connect these understanding and help them to see it rather than just a bunch of words or just do what the doctor says. I help them to understand why. So you become, you choose something you love, become good at it, humbly learn and become an expert at it, and still don't think you're an expert, just 
do as much as you can by learning and enhancing your knowledge and putting it to work and helping people or whatever service it is, is it's business, equipment, whatever it is, you learn as good as you can, whatever, as much as you can in it, and then uh, you will find the niche and people will find you and then you can change your price. <laughs> Which, by the way, it's, it's I'm pretty soon, as soon as I find someone expert to do some changes in my site, I will have more services do uh, there and then I will also change the prices. <laughs> so, because now it's, 12 years pass, um, compared to then, I'm far more knowledgeable and uh, uh, tested. <laughs> so, by the way, any of you guys who know an expert in making sites, because I have a site, you can look at my site, but there are things I want to change in it. Someone who's actually expert, not just novice, who knows what to do and is not going to charge me a lot, i like to hear about you guys so we can... Uh, I can ask your help and you can do some stuff on the site for me. But you got to be an expert. Just don't come and fuck it up. <laughs> all right. So it looks like we have hit all the questions that uh, we have. Uh, let's see what else uh, he says here. He says, I want to ignore girls who think me as a who take me as a fool. Okay, and Joker, and show them my attitude. Okay, well, you're 18. Why? Why the hell do you want to be so vindictive about girls? I mean, the girls who make you feel the way you do is not necessarily mean. They're stupid too. They're young, and they think oh they're pretty or something or they got the world by the balls. But they don't know what awaits them. There's so many challenges that you can't solve it by just being pretty. So let them deal with their own life. You don't have to be disrespectful to them. You don't have to prove anything to them. If they're not your cup of tea, move on. You don't have to say something to them or be vindictive or rude or be a gentleman. They don't want you. Great. I respect that. You go. Go to someone who wants you. And don't look for it so much. You, you know, do your things. Be busy with your with your life and learning. You're 18 years old. You don't have to think that you're not good enough or you're perfect or they're not good enough or they're amazing, better than you. None of that. Just be friends. You know, if it works, it works. It doesn't. You don't have to suddenly have a wife at 18 years old. So uh, focus on your studies. Focus on what you want to accomplish. And don't worry about which girl pays attention to you or which guys have girls and you don't have. Don't want, don't need to show anything to anybody. Just do your life. They will come. When you're busy with your own thing, girls actually are attracted to the ones who really don't pursue so much. But when you have a girlfriend, then you pay attention to her, not when you don't have a girl. If someone accepts you or selects you as her man or her boyfriend or whatever, then she deserves to get your attention and your know whatever else you can do but before that you don't have to just run around try to prove people oh i'm really good you disrespect me you didn't like me so, so what who is she another human being she doesn't like you you know it's her right and you don't have to like her either you move on and we have lottie martin my goodness where have you been it's been a long time lottie says, yes, that's so true. Gentlemen are great. Okay, good. And uh, don't forget to let me know your age, Lottie, because I forgot, and which country you're residing. Again, I forgot that, where you are located. And Samir says, one day I make them jealous when they see me. Oh, forget it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about proving them anything. Sometimes they become kind-hearted as OCD suffer with poor and needy without greed. Yeah, okay. okay, I help. Okay, good. Good, good. And um, Leonard Shepherds, Leonard Shepherds says, Hi, 25 Netherlands. Ah, hello. And... Uh, 
he says, I've been fooling around a few months with a girl who has been in my friend, who has been in my friend group for years. I've purposely not asked her to be in a relationship. She's hot and cold now, though. Any advice? Yeah, make up your mind. Shit or get off the pot. It's very philosophical way of putting it. But <laughs> what the hell are you there for? What do you mean fooling around? She's hot and cold because you are hot and cold. You're fooling around. She's not sure if your intention. And you're so afraid that she may reject you so you don't really show your intention. Be a man. You like her? Tell her I like you. She likes you? Great. She doesn't? Oh, don't waste time. Don't waste time. Move on. She moves on. You move on. What is this business? I don't want to get it, but if I want to get it, then she may not give it to me, so I just keep my hand in the middle. What does that mean? Do you want tea or you don't want tea? <laughs> so, make it clear. There is no, listen, there is no shame in being rejected. We're men. We're ready to be rejected. We're born to be rejected. But that's why we get things done. We try, we ask, and we initiate. And if they don't like us, fine. They're lost. That's how you should think. And you move on. Why? Because you're a special person. And you should understand. And you should have done things to, to make sure you understand that you're special. Not just because I'm special, because I want to be, uh, you know. No. you got to be a man, a gentleman, a man who can think and experience and is willing to, you know, take on certain responsibilities on the shoulder and train yourself and treat yourself in a proper way throughout your life so you have a confidence to feel that you're a good man. Then if you're, uh, you know, offering friendship to someone, if she doesn't accept, well, it's her loss. That's how you think and you go on. But if you've got nothing to offer as far as wisdom, experience or chivalry or gentlemanly or whatever else, care, passion, compassion, then you always will think the other girl is better. The girls are better than you because you got nothing to offer, but they've got the beauty. And you think because they're beautiful, then they've got a lot to offer. They may also not have anything else up here and no experiences, but they look nice and you're genetically designed to be attracted to that. That's not a credit to them. That's the way you're put together. Now, the credit to them would be when they actually, with their behavior and interaction with you, show you that they've got a lot more than that sexual attraction. That's where the compatibility takes place. And you will find out throughout friendship. But you don't have to constantly play with people because you're scared to show your real intention. You're 25 years old. If you like her, well, ask her on a date, a real date, and, you know, do fun things rather than you don't need to be hot and heavy just explain or get philosophical oh, you you're young you don't need to do any of that shit so you just play around uh, meaning having a good time and be cordial and then see if it develops something and she will show you her intention if she has intentions about this relationship she will show it if she doesn't then you move on not the end of the world what are you scared of what are you afraid of you can't be afraid of women. They're the most beautiful thing on earth. So just offer what you want to offer. If they accept, great. If they don't, somebody else. All right. Lottie Martin says, people have things happening and you are busy. This is kindness in life. Okay. Uh, I think I'm in the middle of the sentence, I didn't get it. it. says, yes, that's true, gentlemen are great. People have things happening. And you are busy. This is kindness in life. Okay, Lati. says, too long, family things are a lot of time. Okay. Uh, Samir says, one day I will become old and more mature about mind and the psyche, learning and being busy 
in it for hours and a stream like Mehran. <laughs> okay, good, sure, why not? And become master in it by being educated acquiring knowledge and perceiving psychology okay good now see there's something you know you want to do that's fine and leonard shippers is good point i read that generally guys want to be exclusive earlier than girls and to give them time to develop those feelings for you when is a, when is it a good time to ask her to be in a relationship as soon as possible no you don't have to ask her the relationship happens it's a mutual thing it's she's not waiting for you to ask her if she thinks this is a go she will let you know by her behavior her attention her level of availability if you ask her out and she's not available, and you do that a couple of times, she's not available, then forget it, move on. But if you ask her out, she makes it available. And if she's not available, she says, I can't do this, but I can do it this way. She makes suggestions. I mean, she's, of course, uh, interested to get to know you further. And then you go on from there and see what goes on. And Lottie says, Lottie, are you going to give me that info, your age and where you're tuning in from, which country? Lottie says, so if we are kind to each other, someone we need a lot of role model. Thanks, Meron, sir, for your kindness, love and peace and hope and forgiveness, everyone. Thank you, dear Lottie. Be well, dear. And thank you for being here and participating in our gathering. Leonard says, thanks for the advice. Your wisdom means a lot to me. You must have had a lot of success with women in your life so far. Well, uh, one thing is for sure, I've never been bad to a woman. I've always been a gentleman. Loved them, liked them, respected them and protect women not just from the outside elements only or others also protect women that you care about or you don't care about protect women from your own desires hmm? they come first not your needs or desire so you're a man a man is not having a male genitalia that doesn't make you a man a man is an attitude because donkey has a dick too but that's not a man that's a donkey male hmm? a man is a is manners compassion love protection service care chivalry sacrifice unselfishness provisions ability to provide being there for someone special that's how you become a man so um that is something that will make you successful whether the girls uh you will have a long relationship with, the, with them or not but you feel respected and you feel successful because of the way you have been treating a woman to treat a woman correctly and right righteous and fairly and lovingly respectfully protecting her it gives you a certain confidence and certain level of value that you cannot get it by simply using women and sleeping with them and you say oh yeah i tapped that one i tapped that one oh yeah well we, we all do that but even though you should not have the mentality of that i want to fuck her it's a different level of being a man you can love women pursue women be great with them and take him out, date him, but never have this intention that I'm going to fuck him. 
I'm going to be a great friend to them. I'm going to be gentle with them. I'm going to be fair to them. I'm going to help them to enjoy themselves and myself. Change the mentality about your attitude towards women and you will feel a gentleman and you will feel strong you will feel manly and you will feel confident and you will feel you've got values beyond the average woman that is out there so you will always choose higher echelon of women with qualities that they can offer that is not necessarily available to other women to offer you so your selection process would enhance Kuro says, 25 male from California. Do you also stream in the week? Well, I used to, but these days I'm a little bit busy with making videos for TikTok and political end, um, you know, trying to do my part in regaining the freedom for our country, where it's actually going downhill to shits with the idiots who are running the country. So I somehow i mean have neglected to have more live streams so i have one live stream on saturdays and i usually keep it for an hour and a half or possibly two and uh, depending on what interest is there and then um, the rest would have to be privately done you can go on my site mind that seeks truth.com make an appointment for skype consultation and we'll explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on skype it could have to do with Breakups, relationships, things about thoughts, things about thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, things about OCD, subsets of OCD, and so on and so forth. And we have Ash says, Maren, as you know, I put on, I put an ask me anything post up about HOCD on a forum the other day and I had over 200 comments and responded to each and every one of them with as much detail and care I could. Good. Afterwards, I went to the bathroom and I swear I, I swear to God, I pissed out tea for about 10 minutes straight. But it was worth all the caffeine <laughs> and the sleep deprivation to hear so, so, to hear so many say thank you for helping. Good, good job. I took all I've experienced and learned about HOCD and everything you've taught me as well and combined it all to give the ultimate advice. I think I could even give you a run for your money now. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... Great Gamma says that, oh, did I miss something here? Hmm. MD Samarhan says, my location is India, which is similar to Canada. Transversely to the coastal area called Co Canada in India, coastal point. Ah, okay. <laughs> Atif says, uh, and says, whose timeline is exactly similar to Canada. I go, really? I thought all India is one time, one time zone. No? So actually right now in India somewhere where you are, it is 2.50 p.m. on the same day. Well, maybe different day. It could be the same at the same time. Is it, I, 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 have, a, I have a hard time understanding. Is it, 
June 18th right now there. It must be June 19th, about 4 o'clock a.m. That's what I think it is in India. But you say same timeline. Interesting. Uh, Atif says, hi, Mehran, mail 39, New York City. I found myself starting to try marijuana one time a week. I did it because I wanted a good feeling at the end of the week. I live alone, but don't want this to become a habit. It will. Don't fool yourself. It will. Pleasure. And the reason is very simple. In midbrain, basal ganglia area, there are three circles on top of each other in the striatum. Goal finding center, reward center, and habit center. So every time that you do something, for example, if you have a um, obsession and you do a compulsion, let's say you think your hands are dirty and it's not, but you uh, and you you see you think you got to wash it. So obsession, hand dirty, I got to wash it. And compulsion, you go wash your hands. That compulsion is goal finding, like you you you're trying to achieve a goal to take care of the obsession. So compulsion is a goal find. But because it's right in the striatum and two other layers are there, reward center and habit center, whenever you do the compulsion, you're also stimulating the reward center, which, in fact, when you do the compulsion, you feel, ah, and that ah is when dopamine is secreted. So by compulsion, you stimulated the reward center, dopamine. And every time the dopamine is secreted, before you know it, no longer you're doing the compulsion for the obsession, you're doing it to get the dopamine. And then after a while doing it hundreds of times, no longer you're doing the compulsion to get the dopamine. You're doing it because it becomes your habit. Because every time you do the compulsion, you're stimulating the reward center and you're stimulating in turn the habit center. So when you get the marijuana, for whatever reason, you have the urge for it because now your body is used to that pleasure and oh, I don't have to worry about anything. And if there's something that can make me stop is anxiety and worry about something, I want it. So that's in a way your reason goal finding so you find it you start smoking it and you feel ah yeah i'm alone which is then dopamine is secreted because you're satisfied something good is happening to you in your feelings and dopamine is secreted and then that's the reward center and every, and when you do that so many times of the 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 marijuana smoking it becomes your habit. You can't escape it. You may think, no, I'm not. I, I can stop it anytime. But you won't stop it because you want it. Why? Because pleasure is also addictive. Yeah? So my suggestion is you can get far superior, healthier reactions, a little bit more difficult maybe, but from meditation. And you get a high like you wouldn't believe. Like... Uh, there are different kinds of meditation that have uh, videos on this channel about uh, guided meditation, how you do it, the energy of the universe and the flow of the energy to the one point, which is the 10 centimeter lower the abdomen and all. I've explained it step by step. There are also other meditations, you know, I sometimes do Wim Hof uh, style of the breathing uh, while my meditation system has breathing exercises on and these are all very uh, amazingly <laughs> effective and uh, brings that uh, brings that tranquility plus the uh, conflux between the energy of the universe and your energy and you become one with the power of nature power of the universe and i've seen you've seen the exercises that i've shown how the that sort of concentration meditation can result which 
I'm going to show you this one. I want to take him. I want you guys to take a moment and watch this exercise and I'll come back to it. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon. Well, we too, like the iceberg, have thousand times bigger powers that is not visible, and we must. Why? Is it something we're rambling on and I expect you to accept it? Or is there actually another power within us? Would you come and help me out? Okay. What I want you to do is put your hands underneath my arms uh -huh. and just lift me up. There we go. Okay, now, that's my physical part, right? Same thing, again, with that. Just want to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Now, this, go ahead, when you're ready. Go ahead. So you see, this is different than what he was doing, and I'm not really doing anything. Doing anything. You're convinced? Yeah. So are you guys convinced that there is something other than, thank you. Yeah, thank nice. you very much. So, but th these, these different kind of meditation are very helpful in bringing you to that level of tranquility that you're trying to artificially get it from marijuana or something else. But when you meditate, you also increase GABA neurotransmitters, you know, gamma, um, amino acid, amino butyric acid. And uh, meditation increases that neurotransmitter about 30 percent close to 30 percent and then growth hormones increase uh, cortisol level decreases uh, serotonin all these have a great increase in them because of meditation marijuana doesn't do that <laughs> it gives you tranquility and alertness and sharpness as well but then wim hof also has a different um, breathing exercise which i enjoy sometimes and that's when you breathe, you, you lay down somewhere that is safe and then you uh, breathe in big and breathe out big about 30 times at least, you know. You keep doing that for about 30 times and then at the 30th times, anything over 30, you can stop by when you exhale and then you don't breathe. Because there's so much oxygen in there, uh, you have uh, got rid of the CO2 and so much that uh, you don't have that urge or need to breathe in right away. Whatever the reason is, you feel like you're floating and you get in such a state that is amazing. And I've gone as far as uh, two and a half, about three minutes without breathing. But the effect of it is resets your neurotransmitters, resets your whole system, and you feel great about it. And um, so these are different things that you can do instead of just making it easy by, because that is a habit for me. And you won't even notice what motions you go through to do that because uh, according to the research of uh, Dr. Anne Grable, MIT professor, uh, that uh, she's a pioneer of the uh, research on cluster of bunch of movements represents one move to the brain. For example, Dr. Schwartz was explaining that when he was a smoker for God knows 30 years, and he said, when someone goes and buys a cigarette and opens the cell phone and tears apart the cigarette package, takes one out, put it in here and put it, uh, you know, flickers the uh, lighter about two inches away from his face. When you ask him, sir, were you aware that you just bought a cigarette, opened the cell phone, tear off the package, 
put one to your lips and then put a fire two inches from your face? She says, no, I only know I'm smoking. Because a bunch of cluster of movements, actions, was represented and translated to one movement into the brain. So you won't even be noticing all these habitual fragments of this experience. You'll just notice that, oh, I'm high. But you don't notice all the other things that he's doing. So my suggestion is that uh, don't let it become your habit, and it will, because you know, who's to stop smoking? Everybody who started, still doing it. You know, <laughs> they started in university or high school. They're like now 50, 60 years old, and they're still going. <coughs> Oops. <coughs> so I don't suggest, that, but that's for me. Um. Let's see. So we have... Uh Leonard says, how do I deal with being intimidated by the girls, by the girl I'm seeing? Why are you intimidated? You're intimidated because you want something from her. And you're fearful of not getting what you're after, which is sex. Don't want it. See, I want to qualify her. I want to see who she is. It's difficult because when you're in the presence of a pretty girl, your brain kind of shuts down and you're only going instinct. And you want her, even though she's not qualified for you, but you want her because you forgo everything about her in pursuit of the pleasure you're seeking, desire for pleasure. That's, that's dangerous because then you don't have the good um, level of judgment on if she's meeting your standards, your lifestyle, your standards, your expectations, nothing. You're, you're accepting someone because a fragment of her personality or what she's all, all about meets your desire for pleasure. But the rest of it doesn't, but you forgo all that doesn't meet your standards for the part that gives you pleasure, which is a very weak way of making a decision or doing justice to yourself and what you're all about. It's like going somewhere and you see a car that it looks good, but doesn't have a good engine, but you say it doesn't matter. I take it because it looks good. You just compromise your expectations to one level of one part of the qualification that this car had, but not all the other things that makes the car the kind of car that you expect it to be. So after a while, you're going to be now more focused on what it doesn't have, and then you're going to be disappointed and you've spent, it, spent lots of your time and in investment in something that you were you help yourself to be convinced duped while all the evidence was there that this is not part of your expectation or it doesn't meet your expectations but you didn't you didn't pay attention to that it's like wanting to buy a product and this product has so many gadgets and one instant of it let's say the clock of it it really looks good and keeps the time very well or some component of it works very well but many other components that you expect that product to perform and have is not. But you forgo all that that is not there for the one that is there because you say, wow, it looks great. That's compromising your expectations and you can't expect that product to actually serve you well in the long run as soon as you get you know, what you wanted out of it and you'll see, well, it's missing lots of other things. That's why this product is not going to function or it's not going to help me with what I want to achieve. So to begin with, you got to not uh, compromise on your standards. Regardless of how desirable part of that product or part of that girl, let's say, is, I don't know, whatever it is that you think, she's got nice hair or nice looks or she's got a nice butt. All of that is just one part of all the 
amazing list of credentials that you expect. But if you compromise that, then you'll not get what you want, but you expect to have the results of what you're expecting from the one that it doesn't have the components that you actually need it to have so it can fulfill what you expect. So, but it's very difficult when it comes to girls to have that kind of a, a presence and a ability to judge. So you, got, you never should compromise your standards uh, in favor of achieving a certain pleasure. Fulfilling a pleasure, having a desire for pleasure, cannot trump lack of standards and qualifications or the uh, expectations that you have from a situation, person, product, business, whatever it is. You just can't substitute one part for all the other necessary parts and say, oh, it'll be okay. It won't be okay. All right. So, she says, I have a hard time feeling equal to her. No, you don't. It's because you want something that she has, and that's intimacy, desire. Unwant her and qualify her. Instead of desiring her, qualify her. And then say if she qualifies to be desired. <laughs> uh, but if you just desire anything that uh, floats your boat, then um, you're at the mercy of their decisions not your standards which is can can help you out because no matter what their decision is if they don't meet your standards your reasonability moves you away from that situation otherwise you'll compromise your standards and you'll see the consequences which would not be uh, palatable to you or meeting uh, what you thought it would end up to be uh, the great Gamma says, I simply have to say, I truly appreciate you as a person. The insight you provide are articulated in ways this, they sit so well with me. Delighted to hear that. Let me know your age, and I can't see your thumbnail, and uh, gender, and where you're tuning in from, which country. Endulugani says, Hello, Mehran, 25 May, London. Hello, Endulugani. He says, I'm going on holiday with my girlfriend. All right. I keep thinking about my ex and how my last trip was with her. Why? Is she there? No. So why are you living in the past? Whatever it was, it doesn't exist anymore. This one does. That's the reality. You're going to lose this one because you're not present with her, your brain is somewhere else, and think about something that doesn't exist. Do you think you can get pleasure from something that doesn't exist, or can you get pleasure from something that does exist? There's this young lady is willing to come to a vacation with you, and you idiot are putting your thoughts on some fucking ex relationship that it's ex. It doesn't even exist. Why are you living in your mind in there? Pay attention to her. Hmm? And um, that derogative word that I used was with love. So don't get pissed off or something. <laughs> I don't like you guys make bad judgments. As, as much as you can, you got to make the right judgment. She's not with you. She's an ex. And you're hanging on on that what? Move on. Pay attention to her. Make her feel good. Provide for her on this trip. Make her feel comfortable, safe. Appreciate her. Buy her flowers unexpectedly. Or not. She can't take it? No problem. Too bad. You do what you got to do. So at least make her feel good. She's there. Be gracious. And Atif says you skipped me. Did I? I didn't, I didn't skip you. Okay. 
That was before the seeing your question, I guess. Yeah, okay. Nam Rufni says, Hi, Miran, nice to catch you live. Yeah, I also like to catch myself live. <laughs> Don't like to be dead. Listen, uh, give me uh, credentials. Hey, gender, where are you tuning in from? It says, Could you tell us more about yourself, general stuff? Well, you know, who cares about that, really, honestly? You guys are here with certain kind of a question. And I'm here to answer those questions. Who cares about my life? Uh, my life is not going to be in five minutes. Honestly, it'll be like hours. <laughs> there are lots to go. If I ever really get the chance, I wouldn't mind, and I've been suggested that, uh, to write about my biography. I think it would be interesting. Uh, it does have interesting um, story. Everyone's story is interesting. But mine too. So maybe I'll do that someday. But trying to tell you a little bit about myself, unless you specifically you want something to know, go ahead. But uh, otherwise, it'll just be a waste of time. Um, great Gamma says, how do I deal with intense insomnia post-breakup? Well, you think if you stay up, she'll come back to you? Or she appears in your bed? We're wasting the time. There's time for everything. When you go to bed, it's for you to rejuvenate, recuperate, and re-energize. So tomorrow morning, you can wake up and think about it again. But that is not the time. It's like saying, I'm not hungry, but it's time to eat. No, it's not the time to eat. But then when you're hungry, it's time to eat. It says, no, I'll go do work. No, you're hungry. So everything has its own time. When you want to sleep, it's time to sleep. Even though you've got other things to do, or other things in your mind, or you want to think about it, break up, or homework, or job tomorrow, but for doing any of those, you got to sleep. So you give priority to what's time for, and that's sleeping time. So um, that should be something that you can um, recognize and uh, be cognizant of it. Uh, and says, it turns into a vicious cycle where the anxiety and intrusive thoughts cause insomnia. Okay, what's the anxiety? What happens that it hasn't happened? You guys broken up. She left or whatever. So what else can happen that could give you anxiety? She sleeps with somebody else. Yeah, that's what you worry about? Well, she's going to do that. She's already do that, done that. Maybe. Why are you trying to protect her from something that she doesn't want to protect herself? She wants to go fuck around. Why are you worried about it? Because you say, if she fucks with someone else, I can't take her back. So it's a selfishness that is stopping you from enjoying your life. Because she's already broken up with you. But you're hoping some for some goddamn reason that you guys will get back together. But you're worried about if she's going to sleep with someone in the meantime, which means I can't take her back anymore. That gives you anxiety. So you got to say, I don't give a fuck. She's probably having her legs up and she's getting rammed because she chose to. Good for her. I'm going to find my own girlfriend, someone that loves me, likes me, wants to be in bed with me. And that's when I'm going to enjoy. Rather than dreaming about your fears, about wanting, not being able to get someone back because she's going to be sleeping with somebody else. Stop all that shit. She has all the rights to do what she wants to do. If that's her decision, well, she's made that decision. Respect that, but also respect yourself and move on and get another girlfriend. What do you think she has that is so important for you to have her? What has she done for the world? What? she's gonna The, the world is going to fall apart if she's not with you? What has she accomplished that she's makes her so amazing catch? Fed all the children in the world, cured common cold or diseases, Helped all the elderly to be safe and secure and fed. What has she done? She just looks good. And you're a guy. She, you know, she looks hot for you and you like her. Or whatever reason. But she's not the only amazing girl. You'll go through life with many different relationships, girlfriends, and uh, intimate uh, experiences. But then you'll find somebody else that you say, wow, at this time, at this juncture of my life, this is the best choice for me. I really like her. Then you like her. 
not thinking about, oh, but this one is not as this or as that as that one because that one is not as this or that as this one. So why are you comparing them? It's a different stage of life, different time and wisdom and expectations and different logic behind it and different fitting. You can't be going to a store and still, uh, you know, fit into a suit that you wore when you were like 18 years old, you know, tiny and not much muscles and, you know, now you're bigger, stronger, and so on. So you have a you know different suit, and fashion has changed too. So you got to go with the time, and your time at the moment is not to be thinking about what is she doing, or if I can't have her, or anxiety that she's not with me. Who cares? You what? How old are you? You didn't tell me that. That's a problem. Quickly, how old are you? So I can continue this. What's your age? Twenty-five. There you go. 25 years old male from London. Okay, you're 25 years old for God's sake. And you think this girl that is probably 25, 23 or whatever else uh, her age is, at this stage of her life, tops all women in the world that could qualify for you when you're ready to be in a serious relationship. Jesus, she can't even qualify. Let her go, no anxiety. Tell her, just go have as many guys as you want. I'm not interested. Why? Because you're not together. Who cares the rest of it? She broke up. Then the rest of it is just history. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Ash says, Mehran, did you ever go through a wild party phase and use drugs and sleep with loads of chicks for a while in your youth? Or is this something you did last night? <laughs> I didn't do it last night. I didn't do it in my youth. I didn't do it ever. I went to parties, but I never used any drugs. And I never abused any woman. I never tricked any woman. I never tried to manipulate women to get them to bed. It just wasn't my thing. You know, I had relationships. I fell in love many times. I loved girls. And I was always charming, nice, gentleman. And, you know, when it called for amusing, funny, cordial, uh, nothing weird about it. But I didn't go to wild parties. I went to lots of parties, but parties, just, you know, regular parties. It was a different time. Remember, my time wasn't so stupid as it is today. Today, society is fucked up. We had certain standards that whether we learned it through our upbringing or whether it was part of the norm of the society, it wasn't as stupid and fucked up as it is today. No manners, no morals, no standards, no nothing. Everything goes and everybody should be everything. And so and no, it wasn't like that. Everything had its own norms and it had its own standards and everybody was living in peace side by side. Nobody was bothering anybody but it wasn't all so mixed up, matched up, and promoted in one way or another. And uh, parties were normal. I'm sure there were parties that were not, in my standard, normal, but uh, it was for them. But I wasn't going to those parties. Or if we go to parties and we see a bunch of people are doing whatever they're doing, we would usually either leave the party or go somewhere else in the party. Uh, but nothing so heavy was happening there were people who would go to maybe some special places or special events of that time but at that time which i'm talking about my time would have been 45 46 47 48 years ago 48 years ago life was healthier the mentalities were healthier uh, standards were higher Society was not so fucked up. Uh, we didn't have psychopaths trying to run the world. We didn't have assholes trying to be prime minister or being prime minister, abusing people or taking people's rights away and uh, take, trying to control them and injecting things to them by force and manipulate them in all these other things that is happening in the world. We didn't have these things. It was a pure, enjoyable life. Right now, laws and rules have become more important than manners and morals and logic. All you have to do is put the fucking thing in a piece of paper and call it law, and then it trumps all reasonability, all manners, 
all moralities and anything that is right just because it is called law. And who changes that laws? The assholes who actually mean negative for humanity, but they have the power to change laws. They cannot make, spe make people do anything. They call that democracy. But then they change it into a law, then nobody can say shit. Because, oh, it's a law. If the law somehow happens to become the law, if something becomes happens to pass as a law, but some assholes in the parliaments that actually allow such a thing to pass and becomes a law, even if it says rape is legal, then say, well, you were raped, you're legal. It says law says. There is no morality. There is no uh, reasonability. There is no logic anymore because the fucking law trumps the bullshit. I'm sorry, no. The fucking law trumps the reasonability and logic and manners and morals. What is wrong would not be considered wrong because the law says so. That's how fucked up we've become. Simple writing changes the morality. We all know killing is bad. We all know raping is bad. But what if it becomes a, today's today's society? If it becomes law, they won't look at it as bad because the law says it's okay. Same thing right now. Infringing in someone's sovereignty of his body or her body is wrong. Has always been wrong. But now that they have put it into law that is mandated, you got to inject this thing or you lose your job. Suddenly, no longer is punishable or frowned upon it's a law so we've become such stupid idiots that a regulation trumps morality democracy and then they call that democracy because it's abiding the law it's democracy how fucked up is it don't get me going on that shit. You guys want to hear more of this? Go on my TikTok. Mind Seeks. My TikTok. Mind Seeks. On TikTok. There we go. Okay. So that was your answer, Ash. <laughs> you wish you didn't ask, right? Eh? <laughs> uh, okay, you guys read it. I don't want to read it. You guys read it. This is what Ash says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, MD Samer Khan says, <laughs> Are you married? No, not anymore. <laughs> uh, I was uh, Leonard Shippers says any books you recommend on women advice on woman advice we want a book for find a woman learn from her or is all your knowledge purely from experience well experience I didn't learn what I learned I didn't I didn't turn these hairs to white color in the mill flour mill <laughs> that's the expression <laughs> working with uh, you know grinding weeds and what that no it's experience <laughs> so and um, we have I'm gonna change this uh, question here <laughs> I don't know how to remove when I Put something for show. Um, Male 32 Argentina says, Hi, Mehran. It's been two months since my breakup. I used to miss her so much. I don't anymore. But I don't know how to stop wanting her to come back. I feel obsessed. Well, uh, you haven't replaced her. You haven't proceeded to... 
find another girl and uh, you are living in your memory. Uh, one reason that you're obsessed with her is not because you think she's the right choice for you or that you miss her. Yes, you do miss her because of the you know experience and memory of the intimacy and sex and all that and the fact that you know you would feel oh uh, I have her so I'm important because since childhood every time that they took something away from us that represented punishment you know you did something bad they took away your I don't know privileges of watching a game or watching a movie or watching television or took your Game Boy or game uh, away or took the cookie away when something was taken away it represented punishment uh, you were bad you did something wrong now it, it it extends itself to the future now when your girlfriend leaves one of the feelings that you have and you want her back so bad is not because she was the right choice or she was a great girlfriend all well, it didn't work out the reasons that you want her back which we talked about but the other one is that you think you've been a bad person because something is taken away and if something is taken away, that means you've been punished. You're bad. And in pursuit of not being bad and proving that you're accepted, you're good because we all want to be accepted, you want her back. Not because she's the best choice, because of this reason and intimacy reason. And because before you got together with her, you had a certain routine of doing things during your day. Those things that you were doing is called mechanical process. Those mechanical process, the things you would be doing in every day, your habits, the things you would do, be engaged in going to the gym and having coffee with your friends or whatever else he was doing, studying in the library, whatnot, or doing your work, it would create an order, a routine. And that routine would be an order, the order of your life. When you got together with her, this order was a mixture of things that you would do and things that she would do, and part of it you would do together. So the order was made by two people. So the old order, which was individually made by each one of you, dissipates and goes away after a while, and it would be replaced with the new order, which would be an order that is made by cooperation of both of you, involvement of both of you. Now, when the, break, the relationship breaks down, She's no longer there to continue the balance of the order, for the order to continue. You are used to the same order, but you can't have that order. Why do you want the order? Because the brain doesn't find security the same way that the body finds security, because both body and the brain want security. Human being has been searching for security and psychological security since thousands, millions of years ago. But... Brain and the body don't find security in the same way. The body finds security when you're sitting at home and you know where your limbs are and you in a safe place, the apartment door is closed and it's in the safe part of town, you feel secure by physical security, by environment that is physically secure, your physical portion of your body finds security. But the mind doesn't find security through physical security. Mind finds security through order of life. When this order that you both created after getting together is broken, however it's broken, you guys are not together anymore, then the order is broken, which means the mind now can't find security because there's no order for it to find security. So it does what you're doing because the mind still wants security, but it can't find it in the actuality of the world because the order is broken. She's left. You can't keep that order going because she's not part of it anymore and she was one of the ingredients of this order to take shape. So what does the mind do? It goes into the memory because in the memory, the order is recorded and still exists. So the mind goes into the, in the memory and finds that routine that everything is recorded and therefore in that recording, it finds order, and especially that the minds, the brains itself, I can't mind and brain in this particular discussion the same word, but mind and brain are different. And in this particular time that the brain is there, it, it's, um, it, 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 it finds order and, and it finds security because 
through the recording that is uh, of, of the through the recording of the order that is in the memory. And the reason for that is that the brain itself doesn't have an actuality. Brain lives in a virtual world. Brain itself is all about neurons and feelings and emotions and thoughts and so on. So it's all virtual, nothing physical about it. Therefore, when it's in the memory where the order is recorded and it's not actual, it can't tell the difference. It feels there is an order. I'm in a virtual world. This is virtual. I can't tell the difference. That means it's the order. And it wants to stay there because it feels secure. That's why you keep going in there, not because she's the best and you miss her, because your brain is wants, wants the order and the order is recorded there. If you can then find new ventures, new mechanical process, new things that you like to do, and when you find those new friends, new activities, new hobbies, and when you create all those new things as your mechanical process, which leads to new routine, which leads to new order, then the brain comes to the actuality because now you created the order and it can find security in this order now and doesn't need to go into the memory. And when it doesn't go into the memory, you don't see her as part of the memory and you won't be continuously missing her thinking, oh, I miss her, I want her, I need her. No, because you're in the memory because the brain thinks that it has to be there to feel secure. Create a new uh, uh, order out in the actuality of the world and brain will join you there and stops going there, and you will, you will stop missing her. All right. Okay, now, you didn't tell me how old are you did, 32 Argentina, all right. Guys, when you have a relationship problem, also let me know how old she is. Yeah, she was a better time, definitely. <laughs> and Comedia Divina says best channel on YouTube well thank you very much for that uh, but answer me why do I only have 8 people here <laughs> uh, also let me know uh, your gender and where you're tuning in from because I cannot recognize I can't see the thumbnail it's so small and uh, how old you are, your gender, and where you're tuning in, which country or which city. I appreciate that. And we have um, Great Gamma says, uh, oh, what happened? Jumped. <laughs> yeah, Ash, I don't know how to get rid of this comment now. <laughs> but uh, hey, you know, who cares? <laughs> Let it be. <laughs> uh, I, I'll replace it with something else as soon as I find a good question. Okay, Great Gamo says, this is a bit of a long question, so please bear with me. During the relationship, I unconditionally accepted issues and etc. in her and never criticized her. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, let me let me change this question here. I, okay. But anyhow, maybe we will find something. It says um, during my relationship, I unconditionally accepted issues and etc. in her and never criticized her. I don't mean why you didn't criticize her, but why did you accept everything unconditionally? Why is it that when a guy gets to a girl, accept everything un un unconditionally? Why? Why should you accept everything unconditionally? Why do you not treat her with respect as a human being who's supposed to be responsible for her actions and what she brings to the table? Why is it that just because you want the sex, you're going to put up with every goddamn thing that she brings it. you got to change yourself because if you don't expect excellence from woman, she won't give it to you and she won't be part of that expectations. As if they don't expect excellence from you, you will be a hoodlum or she, they would attract hoodlums and not necessarily someone like you. So why is it that it's okay for them to expect excellence or the best of you but you're, you, you shouldn't expect that, and it should be okay as long as they just let you touch. Because you don't have any respect for yourself, or at the same time, you're overvaluing what they have to offer and undervaluing what you're offering. Hmm? In a relationship, you can't rely on what goodies you receive. you got to rely on what kind of a treatment and companionship and sharing and support that you receive from each other among many other things but you seem boys seem to be settling just because she's pretty and then every other shit that she brings in i gotta put up with it because i i just want to make sure she won't go anywhere else she won't fuck with anybody else and she won't she won't leave me and she, i get some that's so lame isn't it i can understand it at your age maybe i can say that because i had enough girlfriends i did I had lots of girlfriends lots of lots of girlfriends in my in my time not you know at my older age it was reasonable but not as you know uh, let's say freely as when I was younger, and when I was younger, things were different, different world, different level of standards and different uh, level of uh, problems, uh, health problems. Uh, today is a lot more uh, complicated than then. So the older I got, the more uh, critical and sophisticated I became. But I understand at your age, you guys put up with anything just to get some. And... I don't blame you because that's how it was for all of us. However, you got to understand times have changed and you got to have expectations. Girls are not the same girls as they were 50 years ago, 40 years ago. Their standards are lower or in some ways higher, meaning financially and expectations are higher, but what they offer or all the other amazing things that a woman can offer are lower. Because it is not promoted anyway that way. It is, it is a taboo to be a good woman. To be feminine for a woman is taboo. It's not an in thing for a woman to be a woman, nurturing, center of the family, center of the universe of a man. Take care of herself. Look beautiful. Be feminine. Do feminine things among other capabilities she, she might have. But being a feminine, being a woman, being nurturing is not bad. That's why women don't really, not all, but still there are amazing ones around, but they are mostly are being trained to be a woman, but not to be a woman. Not to be womanly, but be a woman. Biologically, but hate men or don't be feminine. Don't be beautiful. Don't be sophisticated. Don't be expecting class. Don't be... All that what made women special is being shit on in the name of feminism, which is the biggest cockamamie bullshit that they made up to devalue and demean women and use them, sold them some kind of a bullshit that 
oh you're a man you're just as good as a man well who says man is good man is good for a man they're men we're men we are as good as we can be but women are women why do we have to be the same we are not the same that's why the whole beautiful thing of it is but they've made it look like the, oh no you gotta be hateful and you gotta not be amazing and there are things women can do that men can never do in a million years. And they're not supposed to. And there are things that men can do that women cannot do in a million years. And they're not supposed to. That's why we complete each other. But you want to turn women against men and make men more feminine. All that fucking bullshit just creates all kind of confusions and takes away that whole beauty of courtship and being a gentleman and being a lady and all that is gone so it's a two different world right now so the fact that you expect things unconditionally that was the first mistake you gotta have conditions you gotta have expectations you gotta have standards how else can you you want to go buy a car you have a standards you gotta have four tires, you gotta have brakes, you gotta have good engine, you gotta have good interior, you gotta have this, you gotta have that, you gotta have the material that is put together. But you don't have uh, expectations when it comes to women because I just wanna sit in the car so I don't care how it looks, what engine it has, just the fact that it has a seat. That's your expectation from a woman. That's kind of woman you're going to get. And that's kind of woman that we're going to get in the world because no man really expects women to be women. To the point that they now fucking call a mother can be anybody. Childbearing person. What the fuck is that? It's called woman. Anyhow, let's go on. Let's go on. Uh, so the rest of your question is unconditionally accepted and never criticized her. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to criticize. You can be constructive or discussion, but you don't have to criticize. It says, however, upon breaking up, she said so many things about things that were wrong with me. <laughs> it serves you well. You keep your mouth shut, expect nothing, then they're going to shit on your head. But if you're open and honest and say, look, this is not the kind of lifestyle I'm expecting. This is not the standards I'm expecting. It, it is good for you. And you may enjoy it however you wish. But marijuana is not for me. Or smoking is not for me. Or drinking is not for me. Or whatever it is that is different. you got to speak out. And then you either come to a certain understanding and compromise. Or this is what's going to happen. At the end, she's going to actually feel that she was too good for you. Because anything the, she dished out, any shit she dished out, you ate it. He said, oh, thank you. It was great. Why? Because you could lay beside her. It's, you know, they each have their own place. So you can blame yourself and nobody else really. The way you treat a woman, if you treat her classy, gentlemanly, and at the same time expecting what your standards dictates, well, that's balance. But if you just, uh, yes, you know, just you know, do whatever, I'll do whatever, then you become that. She won't be the best she can be. And then she shits all over your head through their relationship. And afterwards, when she leaves, she gives you all kind of shit that you never thought that's, uh, uh, you know, becoming of you. Uh, so many things of me, and yet I still held my tongue. Well, because you're pussy whipped. That's what it's called. They call these people who say nothing, do nothing, uh, object to nothing as long as they can get some or fear of she may go somewhere else. It's pussy whipped. And you got to get out of that if you want to be a man. And you can be useful to a woman. No woman stays with a pussy whipped. They may feel it. it's um, fun for a while or confidence boosting. But after a while, they find it weak, which it is. Meaning, not necessarily you're a weak person. It means that you're weak in light of your desire for pleasure. If you can't 
hold off your desire for pleasure, that means you're always going to be controlled by it, and that's your weak point. You got to be able to withstand the, the lack of pleasure. If you can't, if you're denied pleasure, you can still be fine. And then you become a man. Great Gamma says it's been a few weeks now, and what causes me a lot of stress is the need to want to unleash my full and unfiltered thoughts to her to speak my truth any clear and and clear my conscience it's not too late i'm sure there will be some kind of opportunity uh if you really want to by being uh, not abusive, of course, but you want to express, just uh, get in touch with her, says, uh, there's some things that I want to talk to you about. I need a few minutes to have a closure. If she says, go ahead, uh, go ahead. If she says, no, say it now, then roll it out on the phone. <laughs> get it over with. All right. <laughs> Or if push comes to shove, just write it elaborately in an email and send it to her. <laughs> that way, you don't have to hear back. Just <laughs> whatever. But you should have done that when you should have done that. All right. Where is the next? Christian Flivlo Flivholm. Flivholm? Did I say it right? I hope I didn't butcher the name. It says, I'm 23-year-old from Denmark. Aha. And he says, oh, you're talking to Ash. All right. Um, Ash says, I'm crying laughing over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Kristen is talking to Ash. So I go to iPhone 6. All right. 30 May, London. Says, what should you do when you can't get a girlfriend? Come on now. <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> Continue looking. That's it's, 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 Best advice I can give. Uh, MD Samir Khan says, Mehran, sir, are you divorced? Yes. And uh, Great Gamma says, the reason I didn't speak my mind during our relationship was probably due to security mindset, oh, scarcity mindset and a low self-esteem. But I was mainly due, but it was mainly due to loving and caring about her. No, you were loving yourself and fear for losing her. It wasn't loving about her. If you really love someone, you gotta tell her the truth. Say, listen, you're full of shit. And <laughs> but very, very nicely, like, uh, excuse moi, <laughs> vous êtes full of merde. You know, you know, French or something, soft language. <laughs> uh, darling, I'm sorry. Uh, you are a bit uh, laced with feces. So, <laughs> all right. Kokyogo sounds like a Aikido technique. 
Kokunage <laughs> says, why can't we the center of our own world? Elaborate. Why we have to be the center of a man? Is this a girl? Why don't you tell me first uh, your gender, age, and where you're tuning in uh, from, and then I can at least relate to the question and properly answer it. Being center of a man's world is not bad if you're a woman, Kokyugo, uh, if that's what you mean. It means you're so important that the man wishes to do everything around you for you. Uh, like you're his inspiration, you're his motivation, uh, you're having his uh, undivided attention, you're important. It's, what's wrong with that? I mean, we love to be the center of our women. <laughs> if they think that we are the center of their world, it's beautiful. That means they're giving us the highest respect. So I'm not sure if you understood uh, the meaning of it. And perhaps that can help. And yeah, so why so serious is hello, sir. Come on, guys. I need the info first. Age, gender, where you tuning in from? Before I answer any questions, I gotta have that. I don't know who you are, where you are, how old you are, and all that needs to be done. And how old is your girlfriend? How old is your boyfriend? How old you are? What your gender is? Uh, all this so I can at least approach it properly. You know. Why so serious is hi, sir? Not the relationship question, but I wish you are having a wonderful day, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Again, let me know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from, so at least I know the demographics. Okay, so it looks like that we have answered all the questions, guys, and we don't have any new fresh question, and it's been over two hours and a half, so it's time for me to say thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I love you all, and uh, I look forward to our next live stream. In the meantime, make sure to check the channel, subscribe, and if you need to talk to me privately, go on my site, mindatsixtruth.com, mind that seeks truth.com and make an appointment for a Skype consultation and we'll discuss and explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. MindThatSeeksTruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.